My name is Milo Kolb. I'm a junior in high school and I restore vintage axes. At the start of the pandemic, I started building a lean-to structure in the woods to pass all the time on my hands without any prior experience. I frequently ran into issues with the building process, so I went down a deep YouTube rabbit hole, learning everything I possibly could about bushcraft, which is traditional wilderness skills. My primary tool was an axe, but there came a point where my knowledge surpassed the capability of my tools, so I decided I needed a new one. To build the fort, I was cutting across the wood grain, which is known as bucking, but most axes nowadays are designed for splitting wood. I could buy a vintage axe, or I could buy a modern tuned axe, and I chose the latter. After a ton of research, I successfully restored my first axe and I was totally blown away by how superior it was over modern axes I've tried. The steel is high quality so the blade held an edge for longer and the handle was thin which is important for comfort and shock absorption. I continued to use the axe to build the lean-to until one day I came into the forest and everything was destroyed. Some of the logs were burnt, scattered all over the place, paracord was burnt, and even some tools I left behind were stolen. I was devastated. I put so much time and effort in, and I took great caution to respect the environment during the building process. To this day, I still do not know who destroyed the fort, but that didn't stop my passion for restoring axes. I no longer had a need for axes, but I still had great respect for the tradition and the history of the tool. With the COVID lockdown finally ending and life coming back to normal, my interest in restoration waned and my interest in other hobbies grew. My birthday came around in December and I went skateboarding with a few friends in Baltimore City. We stopped at a burnt down house along our adventure and while messing around in the rubble, my friend spotted a severely neglected axe. I quickly realized that it's a vintage true temper axe which is very high quality and desirable. It has a special feature called phantom bevels which helps the axe not get stuck in the wood while still looking aesthetically pleasing. It also has a very thin profile which is perfect for bucking wood, so my excitement was immeasurable. I still believe that that's the best birthday I've ever had. <laughs> the spark from my axe interest increased and I wanted to restore the axe very well. I started watching more YouTube videos, but I wanted to learn even more. I joined Facebook groups and I was shocked at how knowledgeable the members are. For example, I was looking at pictures of axe blades under microscopes. Once again, I started going down the rabbit hole, learning more than I possibly could have ever imagined. I was finally a part of a supportive community, and I was helped along every step of the journey. I restored the True Temper Axe very well, but I wasn't completely satisfied because the Facebook group has raised my standards. I started restoring axes every day, and with that, my craftsmanship improved. I built a workbench with my dad because the previous one was really flimsy. Our choice of materials was reclaimed wood from Baltimore City, and it turned out great. My focus for axe restoration became optimization for bucking. This brought up many new learning opportunities because it's a super niche category.
Specific geometry is required for bucking because a thin profile is necessary for getting the axe to penetrate deep into the wood, but other aspects must be balanced for efficiency. To continue developing my skill set, I learned leather work to make axe sheaths, which is a blade cover. I really loved all the variety because learning to sew and create from scratch is very different than axe restoration. You do good deeds, but no one sees. After a year of restoring axes, I felt like it was important to share my knowledge and create YouTube videos especially since there's such a lack of information on this topic. I also started an Etsy page to sell restored axes, but I quickly realized that the market's oversaturated and people undervalue their work. Instead, I started selling leather axe sheaths, which sold much better because there's more of a demand and they're really fun to make. Despite axe restoration being a very niche hobby, it's opened up many opportunities for me and I've learned many new things. Quality over disposability. Having few items that will last a lifetime is way more valuable than having many low quality items that will break and wear out. Restoration is experiential learning because there's no rules set in stone. It's up to you to decide what path you want to take and how you want to go about your restoration journey. I have admiration for older traditions that are dying in popularity. It feels special being able to connect with the past and relate with older generations that have trouble connecting with newer generations and young people in general. I'm happy to learn about traditional skills because it gives me a sense of what our society was built upon. As long as I'm knowledgeable about older traditions such as axe and saw restoration, the knowledge will not die off with my generation.